Hello and welcome. I am Meghna and you are watching the Learn Electronics India channel. In this video, we will be learning about the three main important components in any electrical or electronic circuit and that is the resistor, inductor and the capacitor. We will be mainly focusing on the different properties, the types of the component, its applications and basically how it behaves in a circuit. Let us get started with the resistor. In one of the previous videos, we have understood that a resistor is a component that opposes the flow of current. And these are the different ways we can represent a resistor. This indicates it is a variable resistor. Another name for it is also a rheostat. And this means it is a potentiometer. A resistor is defined as a passive two-terminal electrical component that limits the flow of current in a circuit. If you are wondering what a passive component is, components can basically be divided into two types, active component and a passive component. So an active component is one that requires external power to function. For example, some semiconductor devices like transistors or PAMs, they all require external power in order to function. Whereas a passive component like a resistor, inductor and a capacitor, these components always function without requiring any external power. For example, if you just connect a resistor in any closed circuit, then resistor will do its job of blocking the flow of current. So that is why we call it as a passive component. Let us understand how it behaves. The analogy I have taken here is a pipe of some width. And at some point, for some distance, the width has been reduced. The E represents electrons. Now let us just imagine that water flows through this pipe. Here the no flow will be normal and here also the flow will be normal. But here, since the width of the pipe is reduced, the flow of water will not be as fast as it was here and as fast as it will be here. Which means for that time, there is some kind of opposition that is happening because of the width of the pipe. Similarly, if we consider this to be a resistor, then in that resistor, the material which it is made up of, there will be some atoms and molecules. Now, when electrons flows through that component, it will bombard or it will collide with these atoms and molecules, which will hinder its movement through the resistor. And that is how it slows down the flow of electron which in turn will limit the amount of current flowing. But once it is out of the resistor, the flow will be normal. So it does not reduce the amount of current in the circuit, but it will limit, it will just block the flow of electrons within itself. That is what a resistor does. So collision of electrons with atoms and molecules of the resistor, it will produce some energy and that energy is in the form of heat energy. So some voltage, some amount of energy from the battery is being used up here in the form of heat. The very first property of a resistor is its resistance. So resistance means the measure of the opposition that is offered by the resistor and it is measured in ohms. Now, every resistor will have its own tolerance, which means some percentage of deviation is allowed for that resistor. And this deviation is with respect to the resistance that is offered by the resistor. Another characteristic property of a resistor could be the temperature coefficient. So, every resistor, its resistance value is determined by taking some reference temperature. So at some reference temperature T0, resistor will have a resistance of R0. And temperature coefficient is usually represented by alpha. So using these values, we can find the resistance of that resistor at the operating temperature or at the current temperature. And power rating of a resistor is the maximum amount of power that it can dissipate. That is in the form of heat energy without being damaged. There is an interesting way we can find the resistance of a resistor by just looking at the component because it will have some color codes. So if you can see this image, 
this is a four band resistor because it has four different bands of colors like this we also have six band resistors if you observe this table there is colors there's a column for digit a multiplier and a tolerance now if you look at this resistor you can observe that the gap between this third band and the last band is little more which means this last band indicates the tolerance of that resistor and the band before that is for multiplier and all the remaining bands are for digits so color brown means digit 1 color black means digit 0 which means it is 1 0 multiplier means we multiply uh, that with the digits so 1 0 into again color brown has a multiplier of 10 raised to 1 which is 10 so 1 0 into 10 is 100 and gold has a tolerance of 5% if you look at the table so which means we say this is a 100 ohm resistor like this we find the resistance of the resistor by just looking at the color bands it is easy to remember this table by forming a sentence or abbreviating the, all the colors one preferable way could be B.B. Roy of Great Britain had very good wife and the last three colors would be none, silver and gold. None means no color. So suppose if there was nothing here, it means that had a tolerance of 20%. Moving ahead, there are different types of resistor and as beginners, we can just understand the fixed resistors and the variable resistor. So fixed resistors will have fixed value of resistance whereas in a variable resistor the value of resistance can be varied or it can be changed but again there will be a range for that resistance under that we again have two things one is a rheostat and another one is a potentiometer while rheostat is you used to control the current potentiometer would will control the voltage for now we just have to understand that the rheostat and potentiometer are two variable resistors Coming to linear and non-linear resistors. In a linear resistor, there is a linear change between current and voltage, which means the resistance remains constant. So if we imagine a x-axis and y-axis, it means it will be somewhat a straight line. And if we draw the slope, it will be same everywhere, which means there is a constant resistance. Whereas in a non-linear resistor, the voltage and current relationship is not linear. And since it is not linear, every time the voltage and current changes, there will be a change in resistance as well. For example, a photoresistor, it is a resistor that changes its resistance with respect to the intensity of light. So as the intensity of light changes, the resistance also changes. So it means since the resistance is changing, the voltage and current also will be changing. So it has a kind of non-linear relationship. Same as the case with temperature sensitive resistor as well. A resistor is used in every single circuit. Be it from a small circuit where we have an LED to a complex circuits that do uh, complex functions. So here are some of the applications. One, it is used as a voltage divider, which means the total voltage that we have that will be divided between the number of resistors that are present. And based on the resistance value, its voltage value also will change. So this is the circuit of a voltage divider. Two resistors R1 and R2. If these two resistors are equal, then Vn would be divided into two equal parts. So at V out, we would be getting Vn by 2 as the voltage. Whereas if these two resistance values are different, then the voltage at these two resistors will be different. And what you see here is a temperature sensor. So in the temperature inside this, there will be a resistive component that measures the temperature. It is also used in signal conditioning and it is used in applications where we need to limit the 
current. Moving ahead, we have an inductor. So if you take any core and if you wind it up with some wires that have conductive properties, then it will behave as an inductor. This is the symbol of an inductor which we represent in theoretical circuits and what you see here is a real-time inductor. Again, inductor is a passive component and it will store energy in the form of magnetic energy when we supply it with electricity. And we have already learned that it will oppose the rate of change of current or the change in the amount of current that flows in a circuit. To understand the behavior of an inductor, let us take this circuit. So this is an inductor, this is a bulb and I have a switch here. Now we will assume the switch is closed which means electrons will flow from positive to negative. Now what happens is this is a resistive element or this is a resistive load which basically means there is some resistance that is offered by this element or a component. So compared to this path this path of the inductor, it will be easy for the current to flow through this. So current will flow here and it will in turn act like a short circuit. So this is a characteristic an inductor in a DC circuit or a direct current circuit will act as a short circuit. It will freely allow all the electrons to flow through this acting as a short circuit. Now suppose I open this switch. There will be some amount of energy stored in this inductor and what it will now do is it will start releasing that energy but since it is an open circuit this energy cannot reach here so the energy will start flowing towards the bulb which means we can see the bulb will be turned on until all the energy from this inductor is released. Now when I again turn on the switch the inductor will get charged and when I again turn off the switch, all the complete charge it will give to the bulb, which will in turn make the bulb glow. So this is the behavior of an inductor. Again, inductance is one main property of an inductor, which will measure the ability of an inductor to store the energy in the form of magnetic energy. And the unit is Henry. Every inductor will have something called as a saturation current which means there will be some amount of current and beyond that current the inductor's behavior will get saturated. So it is the maximum amount of current an inductor will handle without getting saturated. Saturated means it further cannot do the function or it cannot do the work it is meant to do. Again, temperature plays an important role in deciding the inductance of an inductor. So, temperature will indicate how the inductance would change with respect to temperature. This again we have seen in the previous slide that an inductor in a DC circuit would behave as a short circuit. And a pure inductor will have zero resistance and infinite capacitance. If you cannot remember about this capacitance, just understand that a pure inductor will have zero resistance but in real time there will be some amount of resistance in an inductor. Next we have the types of inductor. So the different types of inductor basically depends on the core material on which the wire is wound. So a wire wound inductor means a simple wire is wound around a core and that core would be made up of iron, ferrite and powdered iron. Basically that has good magnetic capacity. In a ferrite core inductor, the core would be made up of ferrite and that will have high magnetic permeability and low eddy current losses, which means the efficiency of that inductor would be good enough. In air core inductors, this third image that you are seeing, the core will be air. So it will not be wound around any material, but it will just be wound in the form of spiral and the air will be used as a core. Coming to application of inductors, it is used in power supplies and it ensures that the power is being stable that is being transferred. It is also used in radio frequency circuits 
and using inductors we define sensors and actuators that can sense or detect the magnetic field. Other applications include communication system and automotive electronics. So basically it, it will filter noise or it is used in transmitters and receivers. Next we have the capacitor. What you're seeing here is that different types of capacitors and this is how we represent it in a theoretical circuit. We have learned that plus means on this plate the positive charges get stored and on the other plate negative charges get stored. We have already understood what a capacitor does. It opposes the change of amount of voltage that flows in it and it has a dielectric material between two conductive plates. Again, we will understand how the capacitor behaves. So instead of inductor, I will be using a capacitor here. Now when I turn on the switch, this voltage or this electrical energy from the battery, it will flow to the capacitor, but it will not conduct here, which means it will act like an open circuit. It will just keep those charges and it will also flow here and the bulb will glow. Now when I turn on the switch. So when I cut this circuit, it means the battery is not connected to this part of the circuit, but still we will observe that the bulb will be on because some energy from the capacitor, whatever it has, it will release all that energy and it will supply it to the bulb. So for some amount of time after the battery has been disconnected, the bulb would still glow. Again, when I turn on the switch or when I close the circuit, the capacitor will store the charges and the process repeats. So the very first property of a capacitor would be the capacitance, which is nothing but its ability to store the charge. And it is measured in Farad. Capacitor will have a voltage rating, which means the maximum amount of voltage that the capacitor can withstand before it breaks down. So suppose the voltage increases, the dielectric material will lose its property and that we call it as a breakdown. So a dielectric material is that material that will determine the properties of a capacitor. We just saw this in the previous circuit that a capacitor in a DC circuit will behave like an open circuit and a pure capacitor will have an infinite resistance. Moving on to the types of capacitor, again the types is decided mainly based on the dielectric media that is used. So when an electrolytic capacitor, this one, electrolyte would be the dielectric material and the plates would be polarized which means they have charges. There is positive plate and there is a negative plate. In a ceramic capacitor, there will be a ceramic dielectric or a dielectric media would be coated on a ceramic material and that is why we call it as a ceramic capacitor. This is a ceramic capacitor. It is more like flat and this is a film capacitor which means thin polymer films or different polymers would be used again and that is used as a dielectric. So that dielectric there will be two electrodes and in between that more like a sandwich type the dielectric would be used. Applications, one main application is it is used in timing circuits or delay circuits to create some amount of delay. This circuit, so if you can see a capacitor and this is the circuit of a timing, cir timing circuit. It is also used to run and start some motors. And like we saw in the circuit, a capacitor is used for energy storage for some temporary amount of time. So in this video, we have understood and learned how capacitor, inductor and a resistor behaves. We have learned about the different types and the applications. Thank you.